Parker and Duke. And the Bulldogs control, and here is Andrew Rousey, just a freshman from Lexington, Virginia. Shot clock winding down. That is off Parker. And just got athletes like Parker, Jefferson, Hood, and the improved on-ball defender and Cook. You should be a very good defensive team. Corey Littlejohn has struggled to score this season, and he dribbles it out of bounds. An early Asheville turnover. Well, those are the turnovers. They're not ideal. But against Duke, and especially here in Cameron, no live ball turnovers in the middle of the floor that can turn quickly into dunks opposite. Duke has dominated the preseason NIT with four titles. Parker with range inside the line. Duke team that won 30 games last year, 14 and 4 in conference. A really a brand new look with Parker, Hood, and Dawkins back, and another actual turnover. That's a completely different look. You think to a year ago, we have Ryan Kelly, Seth Curry, and Mason Plum. When Cook runs the point, he's the returning leading scorer, assist man, and rebound. Here's Hood, the Mississippi State transfer, and Parker on the glass inside. He's got four. And that's over the top of the six foot ten, 240 pound DJ Cunningham, whose rebounding numbers are very good. That's just the athleticism of Parker making the difference. Asheville has yet to get a shot off. Two turnovers, first two trips. Hughes from the corner. Duke coaches want to see the guards rebound more, so a good sight that Rashid Suleiman brings it down. And Parker turns it over. Yeah, you make a good point. I mean, there's some areas to clean up. Duke has not been able to get a ton of offensive rebounds because they're well over 50% shooting. But the defensive backboards are a concern for them early. Hughes buries that three. Sam Hughes steps into the starting lineup due to an injury to Will Weeks, a knee injury for the sophomore from Charlotte. They're also without Trent Meyer, who's out with an ankle injury. So shorthanded tonight for the Bulldogs. Rodney Hood has a triple and, and that's hard because hood is a guy who's averaged over seven free throws a game so Asheville comes in with the intent to give him a cushion to keep him out of the lane Asheville able to get in the lane but Parker will start to break he'll take it all the way himself and the freshman from Chicago will go to the line and on the glass Asheville can run some size out there tonight well they've got a seven-footer off the bench and Jaleel Roberts who is a very good athlete that cut knocked away by Rodney Hood Parker again starts it off Suleiman has it taken away by Hughes and you can see Nick McDevitt the head coach he talked a lot about not allowing Duke to speed up their pace obviously the turnovers are not ideal but they're right there in it Rousey pulls and it's kept alive inside by Cunningham and so Little John gets a shot. Another offensive rebound. A third on this possession, and Cunningham will get it. Look at Asheville. Not one person on the free throw line. Four guys back over the midcourt line, making sure on a missed shot, no transition opportunity for Duke. Jemmy Ojale on the floor for Duke. Along with Josh Hairston just into the game. And Tyler Thornton. Three ball is good for Ojale. Six seven freshman. On the other side, Hughes with the answer. His second triple tonight. Four point game. So after some early turnovers, when they've been opportunistic with their shots, they've made a couple. Hood 
the lefty in the lane. Nice touch. Five for Rodney Hood. And that's with Jerron Lane giving him a cushion. He's playing him for the drive. Hood is just so good getting to that left hand. And on the other side, this will go against the block charge. The part of the rule that I think is difficult is officials are supposed to determine some, somewhat of the call as Ojale gets another three ball and makes it. You're asking the official to know the upward motion of the player with the ball. I mean, for years, these guys have officiated the defense. Now you're going to have to look at the offense first. And that's when the defensive player must be set to draw the charge. And it worked for Hairston and company. Duke is off to a red hot start from the floor. Six of seven in building this lead. Great pressure by Rodney Hood. Cunningham left it short. There's Jerron Lane inside. And Asheville doing a great job. He will have times tonight where he guards Jabari Parker. And at practice, he was impressive. A seven-footer getting down in the stance with his athletic ability. Fun to watch. Cross-court pass nearly taken away. Plenty of time on the shot clock, but Lane won't waste any more. His first bucket. Nicely done. Dangerous pass, as you say. Any cross-court pass against this, this level of athlete can be dangerous. But nice job by him to keep his composure, dribble into the open area. Quick three from Quinn Cook. And a push off inside is going to go again. Their effective field goal percentage is the best in the nation. I would have ventured to say that talent is fairly significant yeah, true. in that equation as true. well. But this is a Duke team that really wants to run. They want to run all. I had them against Davidson, and they were pushing the pace. They got a ton of fast break points. I still don't think, from a pace standpoint, they're where Mike wants them to be. Andre Dawkins now on the floor for Duke. As he returns to action after a year off. And he returned in a big way last time out with 17 points in the win Friday night. Parker finds Thornton. It's like he's been here for a year already. I'll tell you this. One of the things Duke does exceptionally well is enter the ball into the post and find the relocated shooters. And everybody is spaced in particular areas. That was perfectly done. Ten-point Duke lead. Little John working on Dawkins. And taken away by Jabari Parker. Quick push to Cook. Afraid to start a break, and it's a timeout for Asheville. Loose ball taken by Thornton. Dawkins finds Cook. And another transition bucket for Quinn's leading assist man. Can't finish the three point play. You've got two guards on the floor, and wisely, DJ Cunningham, knowing Thornton is checking Rousey, goes to David Robertson. Robertson, a freshman from just down the road at Cary, North Carolina. Lane gives it up. Cunningham does two, and that is a hard foul from Tyler Thornton. The trainer said, I got to get in the weight room and get to work because I want to be a part of the lineup. And to his credit, it's paid dividends. He added 20 pounds of muscle in the offseason and against College of Charleston the other night had three blocks in a key victory for Asheville. 167 58 in overtime, leading by 10 at the break. Matt Jones is on the floor. His little floater is redirected by Jaleel. Steal on the baseline, but carried over. Who, who at 6'6", 220, could handle. And they used him against pressure in the past. <laughs> Foul will be inside against Jaleel Roberts. It's his first. The NIT season Rhode Island and Metro State. The NIT season tip-off Tuesday at 6 and 11 on ESPNU. The game's also live on Watch ESPN. Andre Dawkins came back in a big way last time out. He That's can, his first tonight. Tom, he can be a game-changing shooter. But if you think about that, that young man as a freshman, his ability to provide punch and stretch the defense. Top 
five school history in three point percentage. Hughes off the window, nice move. Nice strong drive. And back they go into the zone and watch the communication. Take it away. This is Jerron Lane. Lane on the way. And it rolls off. And then a foul inside. In. He said some coaches will tell you they can do it defensively by packing it in. We know if we try to pack it in against these guys, it's just going to go over our head and in. Yeah. Another three. And Parker is there. The freshman steps through traffic and nearly had the putback. Finally taken down by Sam Hughes. You've played your hand twice now. You're an advanced analytics guy, I can tell by your prep. I just think that you can break it down and then you can get a good feel for when to believe the coaches and when not to. <laughs> okay. I would Syracuse in a one versus 16 game. Nick McDevitt said that we're not that team anymore. We've got great size. We want to play good defense. We don't necessarily want to run. They made a point of that yesterday. They had four four minute scrimmages and they talked an awful lot about pace and not getting sped up. But you don't mind here. A blow boy got in the way. But there for the jam is Sam Hughes. You got to be on your toes. I sense we're going to have some ball boys running lines tomorrow morning. <laughs> he didn't bother Hughes in the least. Parker had it blocked inside. And two for two from the line for the freshman. He, of course, is on everybody's freshman of the year watch list. He's also on the player of the year watch list. Just an extraordinarily gifted offensive player. Andrew Rousey hasn't gotten it going yet tonight. Blocking foul. Also live on Watch ESPN. Two, Two years in a row, Iowa State picked in the lower half of the standings. Two years in a row, NCAA tournament for Fred Hoiberg. Nice foul. Oh, yes, Roberts. Do play by play. Do it. <laughs> I'm going to go teach that ball boy how to get up the floor. <laughs> Jabari Parker inside. He's so athletically gifted that if you just throw it up there, he's going to catch it. He's going to out jump anybody around him. Maybe that's one reason Mike Krzyzewski said that some of his guys were too busy watching Jabari Parker in the first couple of games this season. Specifically Rodney Hood. A little teardrop, no. And there's your guy Roberts again. You can spot him. And now the three. Got it. Big triple from David Robertson from Cary, North Carolina. And I like that they're playing two guards that can handle and be comfortable with the ball. Asheville basketball. China. Showing the replays, Andrew Rousey and Quinn Cook had some words for each other. That was just short on the slam by Hughes, the would be. And now Suleiman finds Rodney Hood. Long two. Plumley couldn't save it. Having words with Rousey, you just get the feeling it's maybe like poking a sleeping bear. He's a very confident young man. I've watched two of their practices and he is not shy. He likes to shoot it, and he's a competitor. Five foot ten in high school, scored a ton of points. Second leading all time score in the state of Virginia. There's Parker again. 11 now. He averages 23 and 8. It happens fast with Jabari Parker. I was here last year when the day before and the day after Duke got Jabari Parker and he announced he was coming here. The stress seemed to disappear from Mike Krzyzewski's <laughs> face. The weight was off his shoulders. That was a highly contested recruiting battle with Tom Izzo of Michigan State among others obviously. But given that he just signed the two best high school players I think he's even more relaxed. Rebound brought down by Corey Littlejohn. He will yank from deep. Just a little strong. And a foul inside will go against Duke. 
It's David Robertson who draws a foul from Marshall Plum. Jabari Parker, from everything we're told, is this incredibly humble, composed young man. Having talent is one thing. Shaping that talent to a cohesive team is another. Kentucky gives a great example of sometimes struggling with great talent a year ago. These two guys have been very good fitting in, and the component parts have been as good. John Calipari knew last year that Kentucky was overrated, that the sum of his career at Mississippi State. Five for David Robertson, the freshman from Cary, is having a good first half. Two-man game, Parker rattles one home. He moves seamlessly, and when I say it happens quickly, one, his scoring burst happened quickly. His jumper gets off quickly, and everything appears to be effortless with this guy. 14 for Parker. Little John's floater is too strong. Parker wins the battle. Coming out of there is Robertson, four on one. Nice feed for the flush. Jaleel Roberts again. You know, Robertson, the freshman, yesterday in practice, and again today, when they were going over the scout, he was making some mistakes, and Nick McDevitt got into his freshman, said, you've got to pay attention. Now, do you realize what building you're in? He's responded well here through the first 14 minutes. Judy and Paul is also on the floor. He's got Plumlee inside, part of this zone, and Parker's able to find the rebound and find Plumlee. What vision. this rule last year that any time you cleared or made contact it was a flagrant one they wanted to take the interpretation out of it now obviously flagrant two would be a different scenario now they can go back as far as I know and assess the flagrant one after the play they counted the basket right they counted the basket according to our producer so hood with the steal now on the other side and It'd be nice if we could just talk hoops and set of rules, and Hood's got seven. Paul gets bailed out by his coach, Nick. I'm kind of at a loss because North Carolina without a point guard just doesn't seem like a sentence that should be uttered. Yeah. Marcus Page is fantastic, don't get me wrong, but he's having to play off the ball because of the missing personnel. And they've got a great point guard coming in next season. Robertson feeds. And the ball was lost out of bounds, I thought, by Duke. Instead, it would go to the Blue Devils after it went off the hands of Emil. Robertson is not a great offensive player. I thought he was a little bit too far from the rim for that kind of catch. Cook with the feed to Thornton. Robertson tried to kick it out. It was knocked away. You should be a part of the program. No question about it. As long as you are in good standing academically and everything's on point, I don't see why they can't travel with the team. Andrew Rousey, no. See, I, I think they're going to struggle to get any kind of momentum if he doesn't start making shots. Rodney Hood. Wow! Can he get after it? There are coaches in the ACC wondering, uh, how do you stop Duke? Who do you stop? Largest lead of the game. Dawkins has the pressure. They tried to force it. Instead, Hughes turns it over. Ninth turnover of the game. Rodney Hood. So good. He came in averaging over seven free throws a game. So I'd do the same thing. I'd give him a cushion for the drive. Rousey turns it over in traffic. Well, they held on to it. Now Little John has it. Their uh, pressure is so good. Look at this. Wow, that's close. Be a block. I'm not going to say those guys, those young men would, like, 
be very upset. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer when they're like the, the deer are hitting each other. <laughs> it's, it's almost <laughs> Christmas season. A couple rams on the side of the cliff, maybe. I'm sure they'd appreciate that analogy a bit this better. This looks more masculine. <laughs> Andre Dawkins, a three-point threat on the other side of the floor. Thornton's three falls off. You, you know, you mentioned it. Mike Krzyzewski will embrace you as a shooter. Yep. What does it take to upset him with a bad three? What is a bad three in your mind and in his mind? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously, there's a little leeway here, so maybe it becomes overlooked, although I think great teams establish habits regardless of time and score. Three-point drive for Cunningham. Out into the wing areas uh, with Parker, with Hood, with Jefferson. I think their pressure on the perimeter, moving forward against good teams, Tom, is critical because you're asking Jabari Parker at times to play the 4-5, and they could get exposed against a quality post game. The pressure outside has got to be great for Duke all year. They have forced Asheville into nine turnovers tonight. On the season, they average 11 takeaways. Little John, good looking shot, just too strong, and it's brought down by Ojale. Duke is a team, especially in these types of games, that will put a run on you, that will just break your back. Last year against Florida Gulf Coast, they went on a 30 to nothing run. Andy Enfield's team was in. And keep playing. Asheville has already used three timeouts to try and keep that run from occurring. Duke has won 103 consecutive games at home against non-conference opponents. St. John's came in here in February of 2000 and knocked off the second-ranked Blue Devils. That was remember in February in the middle of conference play. Five. They don't want to cross against Duke because it's too dangerous. So all their guards are spaced, but everybody played great individual defense for Duke. Offensive rebound by Jefferson against the zone, finds Hood, he's got three threes tonight. 15 in the first half for Rodney Hood. Roughly a second difference between the shot clock and game clock. He came in averaging 20. He's been held scoreless his first half by Quinn Cook and company. Cook is in his pocket. Shot clock is now at five. Little John forces one. An air ball. Chance for Duke to get one off in Mike Krzyzewski. So, yeah. Here at home on that clock. He fires a fastball that's knocked away. Dawkins got it off. It's not just the turnovers or points. Off turnovers that point to Duke's defensive effectiveness. They have held Asheville's backcourt to just one for 11 shooting in the first half, and that includes Rousey, their leading scorer. Black to me is, is crucial. Duke has just completely limited him, taken him right out of the offense. Jabari Parker lost the handle on it. Asheville basketball games. This guy, when he was a young man, would go over to games, shoot at the gym, go to the camp on UNC Asheville's campus. Spent an awful lot of time as an assistant coach and an associate head coach. This is his job. Go over for Eddie Beatenbaugh, who was there for a long time, former NC State player and assistant coach. Quick look and bank shot from Sam Hughes, leading scorer for the Bulldogs with a dozen. 
McDevitt played at UNC Asheville. He was a point guard, two time all academic performer. And not just born to coach at Asheville, but perhaps born to coach in this building against Duke. Grew up going to Dean Smith's basketball camps. I remember about those Dean Smith camps, and that was an acronym they taught us called BEEF. Ball, eyes, elbow, and follow through. Love it. And that's how I learned my shooting form. Ball, eyes, elbow, and follow through. You know it's effective when all these years later he remembers it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> And while we can, let's send a congratulations out to, to Dean Smith, winner of the Presidential Medal for Freedom. My understanding is Coach Guthrie will go and get ready for Big South play. And you think about scheduling, and there's so many benefits to playing these teams, even if the final score is where you want it to be. That is correct. Back-to-back -back Big South champions. So you don't blink in the NCAA tournament because you've been exposed to this caliber team. It's a financial boon to your institution, and frankly, much needed for many of these institutions. They nearly knocked off Syracuse two years ago in the tournament. They had an early season test when they went into Columbus to take on that modest Ohio State Buckeyes, a top five team at the time with the likes of Jared Sullinger, Aaron Kraft, Deshaun Thomas, the whole likes of them. You gotta think that that helped. No question. Plus, how about the recruiting advantage? You know, you tell these guys, okay, you're going to go to all of these great buildings and compete. So Andrew Rousey is a 5'10 guard who three times in high school put up a 50-point game. But most major Division I schools aren't going to look at a guard that size anymore. Parker commits a foul. Well, I, and I said, when I was talking to Mike Krzyzewski yesterday, I said, you cannot tell me that all of the time that young man is going to spend in individual defensive breakdown drills with Jeff Capel having to do the scout. All of those things have real value to Jabari Parker and anyone else who aspires to the next level. Suleiman with the crossover got some space and a chance for an N1. Right here with N1 finishes and an opportunity to make a three. 70% for the season from the line. All freshman performer in the ACC last season. You mentioned it before, this could be a slap the floor kind of defense for Duke. I think so. You always say as a coach, make that next pass, make the easy one. Which one is that, coach? Because <laughs> Hughes just had to take it to the rack because there wasn't an open pass. And now Hughes, his 14, not bad for the sophomore from Battleboro, North Carolina. Nashville goes back to the zone. Oh, it's actually a good idea by Parker to just put it behind him. See the second leading scorer in the state of Virginia history as a high schooler. Came in averaging nearly 20, held scoreless tonight. He had 12 in his college debut, and that was at Rupp Arena. Trying to find an assist at least. Friendly touch for Cunningham. I'm telling you, 6'10", 240 pounds, for somebody to be able to handle the ball, keep his body under control as he attacks the rim. They, they have two posts that I think are terrific and could be a real handful in the Big South. When Cook got inside. But to me, that can't happen. If I'm coming in, I deliver a message on that drive. He's playing with three fouls, but he averages four blocks a game. Yeah, but get after that. Or Roberts was the first guy he went by. Nice move pass. Jefferson got his own miss. Faded away, and it ends up with Parker. He wants to run. He covers the floor quickly. And wow. he takes it coast to coast. Come on now. That looked like a near illegal dribble that he somehow gathers and finishes. Rousey, not feeling it tonight. Got two hands on Parker, then gets whistled. For one part of his career, so he wouldn't have gotten it. And Iverson missed out on his final year for other reasons. And that ball is out of bounds. All-time leading score in Virginia history. He went on to play at 
Western Carolina University where he averaged seven points a game. Stacey Irvin, not Alonzo Mourning, not Moses Malone, Ralph Sampson, J.J. Reddick, or Allen Iverson. And then Rousey, well, he was right there with him. Coming out of Black Ridge High School in Lexington, Virginia, averaged 36 as a seat. 36 in the Virginia. 60 in one game, at three games over 50. And I'm telling you, his ineffectiveness tonight is, is not because he's scared or un, or he's phased or he's not poised. It's because Duke's defense has... 137 points in his prep career in the Virginia Commonwealth. Now, you're going to really impress me if you can tell me where the leading scorer from Virginia high school history is right now. You've impressed me already. Uh, I'm guessing right now, at this moment, he's playing in a rec league. <laughs> and he is pumping and jumping. He's tearing it up. <laughs> Hughes turns it over. It was tipped by Duke. Shot clock goes in single digits. Robertson. Floater. Beautiful touch from David Robertson. That was the play I thought he should have made in the first half. And good for the young man to come out in the second half and not make the same mistake. First half, he over-penetrated, tried to put a tough pass on the money. That was a really good decision. Reach in foul from Corey Littlejohn. In this day and age. Cook, beautiful find, and Ojale draws the... Andre Dawkins back on the floor for Duke. It is easy to overlook a guy like Shemi Ojale when you talk about Jabari Parker all night, Rodney Hood, who did not see action last season. You bring up a great point. A freshman out of Otto, Kansas, has made an impact early in the season for Duke. His Victor brother was at Kansas State. Really nice run for the Wildcats under Frank Martin. That was touched by Ojale in a diving attempt. Ojale's father, Ernest, is a family doctor. He came to the United States to do an internship and residency at the Kansas Medical Center run by the University of Kansas. And lo and behold, his first son goes and plays at Kansas State. Mm. The pop says, what are you doing? <laughs> Five on the clock for Lane. A little leaner. Rodney Hood has it. Hughes gambled. And Hughes gets a foul from Robertson. 11 on ESPN. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. 18 for Rodney Hood. And the perimeter defense for Duke that you're talking about was nearly non existent two years ago, at least not to Coach K's liking. They turned it up a notch. Last year got a little bit more athletic on the wings, and they've turned it up even more seemingly this season. Oh, great point. I mean, two years ago, remember, they were like a sieve on the perimeter. Anybody could get by on a triple drive, compromising their whole defense. Baseline jumper is good for Sam Hughes, 16. It'll be interesting to get a look at Arizona tomorrow night. Aaron Gordon, one of those fabulous freshmen who doesn't appear to be bothered by the weight of expectation. We'll see if Dan Hurley at URI can beat Metro State. He has upped the talent level at Maryland a year ago in a nip and tuck ball game. He's a Washington, D.C. kid, and I saw his fire as high as. He's one of five returning all conference performers in the ACC. 12 points, four boards, five assists last year with the math the product. Take away by Parker. Cook will give it up. Here we go. Another chance to run. Parker got away with a walk. Numbers the other way. Just I'm anxious to see this team rounded to shape. Will Ojale be part of the rotation when the competition level gets higher? And how deep will that rotation go, whether Correct. it includes Ojale or not? Yes. 
can Andre Dawkins be a game-changing shooter consistently? Andre Dawkins barely picked up a basketball in his time away from the game last season. Rarely shot. Sometime would go weeks without shooting. In fact, he wasn't allowed in the Duke practice gym if the men or women's team were there. It's an over-the-back ball. Go against 